Africa. For a while now, we've been on satanic tools, and we are going to be checking another satanic tools that the devil uses to deceive the children of God. I want you to listen carefully and be prayerful, and I pray that the Lord God of heaven will expound his words in your heart in the name of jesus shall we bow our heads as we pray my god and my father we thank you bless your name we give you praise for another privilege and honor to stand before you today to listen to your word and to learn at your feet father we pray oh god that you teach us yourself let the entrance of your word give life let it give understanding to all of us here present and listening in the name of jesus Father, Lord, I yield myself to you. Lord, speak through me to us today. Let your words take root in our lives, in our heart, in the name of Jesus. Help us not to keep the word only in our head, but to move it to our heart and to live by it, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because it is done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The last time we talked about a satanic tool called anger that the devil uses to destroy the children of God if care is not taken anger is something that we don't want in our lives and I tell you there are some people in the Bible and even today that the devil are misled and deceived using that tool that they did not fulfill their prophetic destiny Moses did not enter the prom promised land because of anger and because of anger Samson missed his blessings because he grew arrogant and you know we know the whole story even in our day today we have seen a lot of people that have allowed anger to steal from them what god has given unto them today we are going to be looking at satanic tools part four called deception deception the devil is a master deceiver and he has deceived a lot of people using different methods so today we are going to be looking at satanic tools part four called deception deception Let's open our Bibles to the book of Ephesians chapter 5 verses 18 to 21. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 18 to 21. And it reads, And be not drunk with wine, wherein in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God, and the father in the name of our lord jesus christ submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of god deception there are different ways that the devil deceives people and turns them away from the path of life another one of the, the deceptive ways, and you know this when the devil is deceiving people what he does is he will turn the word of god around to suit his own purpose for instance, now we just read Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18, wherein it says, and be not drunk with wine, wherein in excess. And also there's a portion of the scripture that says, drink a little wine for your stomach's sake. And the wine that is referred to in that scripture is not alcoholic wine. It's not spirits. When we talk of spirit, we talk of uh, all this uh, liquor, uh, brandy, scotch, uh, vodka and all those they are rightly called spirit because spirit is a spirit it's not just a drink but it's a spirit that you imbibe that you drink in that takes over your senses so what the devil does is he will deceive people into turning the scriptures to suit their evil uh, agenda when the devil tells you and be not drunk in with wine wearing in excess he will tell you if god does not want you to drink wine why did he turn water into wine the, the wine they are talking about in the Bible is non-alcoholic wine, is grapes. But, but because the devil wants to deceive you into ruining yourself, he will bring that scripture to your mind. And then because you want to be deceived, you will accept it and you get yourself into trouble. Another scripture that Satan has used in deceiving and luring many into hell is the fact that Jesus turned water into wine in John chapter 2. He will say if Jesus does not want us to drink wine, why did he turn water to wine? Satan is simply playing on the ignorance of people. And you know, some people deliberately want to be ignorant because it suits their purpose. When the Bible says, bring in all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now here with if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. You see, people know that scripture. They know it's something we have to obey. 
but because to suit their own uh, not wanting to give their tithe, they will start to ask questions because the devil has set them up to be deceived. Do not let the devil deceive you. The devil plays on the ignorance of people. He knows that not everyone understands Greek. Greek. What was translated in this passage as wine was grape juice, which does not intoxicate. No alcoholic beverage was served by the disciples to the disciples at the wedding Jesus attended. In Leviticus chapter 10, verse 8 to 9, God warns strictly against drinking strong drink. This goes beyond avoiding it when going to church because as a child of God, your body is the temple of God. It means avoiding it completely. In Judges chapter 13, verses 4 to 5, and Luke chapter 1, verse 13 to 15, God warns something's mother and Zechariah to avoid strong drink, to avoid the drinking of alcohol, to avoid drinking any strong drink because the truth of the matter is that when you drink you misbehave when you drink alcohol when you drink uh, uh, alcoholic beverage it turn, it takes over your mind it clouds your mind you cannot think straight you cannot behave well you cannot even walk straight you cannot even talk coherently that is a lie from the pit of hell the devil has deceived people into thinking it's okay. Some people will say, oh, I am drinking to drown my sorrow. You don't know that you are drinking to drown your life in, 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 the, in life's miseries. Some people say, no, when I drink, uh, I forget my sorrow. Only for a moment. It's hanging on the door. It makes you forget your sorrows, but it adds more sorrows to you that by the time you are sober, you find out that your problems have multiplied. Do not listen to the child of the devil or to the, to the lie of the devil. This is simply saying that anyone whom God has set apart for himself should not drink alcohol. They are to become pillars of God's house. They should be filled with the wine of God, which is the Holy Spirit, and not satanic anointing. Anyone that drinks alcoholic drink has been anointed by Satan for destruction. You cannot fill your body with satanic anointing of alcohol and expect god to speak to you and expect god to speak to you it is the devil that is controlling people who are drinking the devil has deceived a lot of people by taking the word of god out of contest the some will say um uh, the, the bible says when they slap you on one cheek turn the other cheek they twist everything god says to suit themselves that is why you must not just read the scriptures with your head. Pray that the Lord God of heaven and earth will translate and transcribe the word of God for you to understand and to act on it correctly. Don't let the devil come and lie to you. The devil will tell you, oh, you are going to die. It's not true. As a child of God, the Bible says God will give you long life. He says with long life will life satisfy you and show you my salvation. Do not listen to the lie of the devil. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Surround yourself with the presence of God so that you will not be deceived by the devil. So that you will not be deceived by the lie of the devil. And be not drunk with wine, wearing in excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. Some believers will say, since we are not allowed to drink intoxicating liquor, liquor let us drink beverages in excess as compensation mm. that is another lie of the devil okay well i cannot drink uh, alcohol i can't drink beer i cannot drink whiskey brandy scotch and all those things then let me drink cool drink let me drink uh, coke or uh, any soft drink as much as i like but let me tell you the thing is that anything you don't do in moderation is going to kill you too much of some good things will kill you. Too much of only God's word and God's spirit and praying will not destroy you. You cannot pray too much. You cannot study the word of God too much. But any other thing that you don't do in moderation is going to destroy you. By the time you continue to consume sugary drink, you are going to develop sickness. You are going to crash your system. So don't let the devil deceive you into saying that well since you cannot drink alcohol you can drink other kind of drinks that are not alcoholic you'll destroy your system everything in life we must do in moderation in moderation the devil will deceive you that well since you cannot you are not allowed to drink alcohol you can drink 
any other thing or you can eat as much as you like you are going to destroy yourself do not listen to the lies of the devil does this sound familiar to you you are free to take salt drinks and fruit juices but if you do not restrict your intake they will begin to purge you that is true sometimes when i buy uh fruit juices and my children drink it too much because they see it it runs them to the toilet so don't do anything in excess do not listen to the lie of the devil for things that are acceptable let your watchword be moderation it is not good to eat too much on it so for men to search their own glory is not glory at all proverbs 25 verse 27 anything that you do in excess any good thing that you do in excess okay because i can't eat sugar so let me eat only as much as i can you're going to crash your system because i'm not allowed to drink alcohol i can drink any other thing in excess you are going to ruin yourself so let your watchword be moderation do not listen to the lie of the devil. Do not let the devil entrap you by clouding your, your judgment and by taking the word out of con the, the word of God out of context and twisting it to destroy you. When someone is drunk with wine, he will be propelled and directed by evil spirit. That is why alcoholic drinks are highly uh, rightly called spirits. The spirit that pushes a man into the gutter and make him to sleep on the main road and beat his wife is not of God. Because <laughs> When you are drunk, you are not no longer in your right mind. You start to see things that are not there. You start to see rubbish. You start to misbehave. You can imagine an educated man, well-mannered, well-behaved, who decides to go and drink. And then he starts to walk for staggering and misbehaving and walking around and vomiting and becoming half-naked in the street. Has disgraced himself. The devil has made a mockery of his life, has made a mockery of his intelligence. So let us avoid alcoholic drinks. Let us avoid anything in excess. Well, so even any good thing that you do in excess becomes a problem. The only thing that you can never have too much of is the Spirit of God. The only thing you cannot have too much of is studying the Word of God. The only thing you cannot have too much of is praying. And believe you me, that's one thing the devil is never going to let you do in excess. Because he knows that the more you pray, you keep on praying, he's going to be in trouble. So that is one thing the devil will not want you to do in excess. But he will want you to do every other thing in excess. Beware, be warned, be not deceived. Hallelujah. If you are filled with liquor, the Holy Spirit cannot fill you at the same time because there will be no space. The devil and alcohol, uh, the, the Lord and alcohol cannot dwell in the same vessel. The spirit of God and alcohol cannot. That's why you can never find the spirit of God in a drunken man or in a drunken woman. A lot of road accidents happen because of drunk driving. I know of a family that was completely wiped off because of a drunken driver who rammed into them and killed the whole family. So let us not be deceived. Let us not listen to the lie of the devil. If you are listening to me today and you are giving to alcohol, and you know the thing is this, is addictive. It is addictive. Alcoholic drink, we have a lot of uh, centers for people who want to get off alcohol. And they, they, they spend a lot of money. And at the end of the day, they are still not cured. Believe you me, the only thing that can cure an alcoholic person is God Almighty. If that man or that woman would take up the bold step and go before God and say, Lord, help me. And that is the only way an alcoholic person can be saved. Because I tell you, even if you go to an alcoholic center and they, they put you through the therapy and everything and you come back home, because you are not a child of God, the devil will come again. All it takes is a glass of of wine passing by your nose or or you passing where liquor is being sold or somebody drinking and passing by you before the spirit will resurrect again only god can save an alcoholic person and when your life is filled with the holy spirit there is no room for the devil there is no room for for any spirit of alcohol or any evil spirit to dwell within you if the holy spirit fills you then what is written in in today's scripture will be your portion hallelujah when you are filled with the holy spirit your life will become 
a garden of beauty. Your life will become a garden of miracles when your life is filled with the Holy Spirit. But when your life is filled with alcohol, when your life is filled with the deceptiveness of the devil, when your life is filled with the lies of the enemy, then how miserable is that life? And once your life is full of alcohol, it will invite other spirits. It will invite fornication. It will invite adultery. It will invite fraud. It will invite stealing. It will invite every other vices that you can think of. It doesn't work alone. So today, if you are listening to me and you are an alcoholic person or you are an adulterer, you cannot keep your eyes away from somebody else's wife or from somebody else's husband. You cannot control yourself. The devil has taken over your life. And if your, your spirit man is crying out for help, the only one who can save you is the Lord Jesus Christ, filling you with the Holy Spirit. All is not lost. I know a lot of people that have been to alcoholic centers trying to get off alcohol, but they keep on going back, going back because they cannot help themselves. Or addicts, drug addicts. You won't believe me, some people are addicted to codeine, to cough medicine. Some are addicted to painkillers and they cannot help themselves. My brother, my sister, the Holy Spirit can help you. You cannot help yourself, but I tell you, I assure you 100%, I know it, that the Spirit of God can set you free. Are you listening to me today? And you have not at any time given your life to Christ, or you have given your life to Christ, or because of one thing or the other, you are backsliding, or as a child of God, you have you are having challenges because of the things in excess that you do, that you are trying to run away from, but you cannot help yourself. The Lord's arms are wide open today. He's standing at the door of your heart and he's knocking and he's calling upon you. That you should not allow the devil to deceive you into thinking it's all over. It is not all over. Today you can surrender your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you walk with him daily, he will rid your life of all those vices, of all those evil spirits, of all those deceptive spirits that the devil has pumped your life with. I want you to say after me today, say Lord Jesus, I come to you today just the way I am. Have mercy upon me. Cleanse me with your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Devil, I renounce you. You are no longer my master. I give up on you and I accept the Lord Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you, my God and my Father. I pray for my brothers and sisters that have given their lives to you today. Lord, I pray that you will accept them. You will wash them in your blood. You will remove the root of evil, the root of evil spirit from their lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, you will fill them with your Holy Spirit. You will write their names in the book of life. You will hold their hands and walk them through this maze of life. That as they have put their hands on the plow, they will not look back. They will walk with you until Christ comes in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because it is done in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I congratulate you, my brothers and sisters. There is joy in heaven because you gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you need someone to counsel you, you want to know more about the scriptures, you need someone to pray with you, or you just want to share, you know, your life's challenges because, you know, the Englishman says a problem, uh, a, a problem shared is a problem halved. You want someone to you want to talk with someone our, our numbers are displayed you can send us a whatsapp you can call us you can send us an email or, or a message or you can give us a call and we are ever ready and happy to walk through this journey with you as the holy spirit leads and um, i want you to know that you are not alone you are not alone the almighty god is with you his spirit will start to walk in you from today in the name of jesus um let's give our offering the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaking together and running over. A man give unto your bosom. Remember the widow's might. She gave all that she has and she was accepted. And today we are talking about her. Do not listen to the deceptiveness of the devil. Do not listen to the deception of the devil that says, hey, the pastor is going to, the pastor needs your money or the pastor wants to take your money. Let me tell you, it's not your, you don't want to, you don't need to know what the money is being done with, but you are obeying the Lord. And as you obey the Lord, the Lord will give back unto you. Good measures, pressed down, shaking together and running over will be given back onto your bosom. And as you drop your offerings, our bank banking details are being displayed on the screen. 
you know follow those uh, if you're not living in those regions where the banks are you can go to our website and go to the portal that says partner with us or donate and as you drop your seed the lord god of heaven and earth will water it and you get your harvest in bountiful folds in the name of jesus also the qr code is there you can scan it and follow the prompt and as you give believe you me givers never lack the giver's hand is always on top and we have a uh, beautiful books with wonderful titles on amazon on google play store and on other social media platforms get those books read them my favorite my all-time favorite is dealing with the giants of destruction and i tell you there are seven chapters there and there are seven uh prayers different prayers at the end of each chapters i've used them several times for videos and i've seen the mighty hand of god move i want you to get those books remember a reader is a leader and as you are informed the devil cannot deceive you by deforming you. Until we come your way again next time in another telecast, remember, no matter what the matter is, you will matter when it matters the most. God bless you and cha-cha.